Excellencies, dear friends, allow me first to warmly thank the Grand Hospitaller for his invitation to speak about new forms of multilateral diplomacy today. <coughs> multilateral diplomacy is indeed very important for the Order of Malta. It can be a very powerful tool to support the Order's motto, protecting the faith and serving the poor and sick, to which you fidei and obsequium pauperum. Multilateral diplomacy is even more needed in this time of crisis, when fundamental values and principles of international relations are being challenged. How can the Order of Malta make the best use of multilateral diplomacy in order to protect human life and dignity, including religious freedom? The Order of Malta needs both to reinforce traditional multilateral diplomacy and to explore and promote new forms of multilateral diplomacy. The United Nations system is today's main platform of multilateral diplomacy, as provided by the UN Charter in 1945 with the principal organs, the International Court of Justice, the Security Council, the UN General Assembly, the Secretariat. At first glance, it looks complex and confusing. Actually, it's top-down, heavy, costly, bureaucratic, with overlap of mandates, competition between various organizations. Nevertheless, the Order of Malta tries its best to make good use of this maze for information gathering on issues and actors and for promoting values, advocacy and action. The Order of Malta, thanks to the observer status with the UN, obtained through the diplomatic expertise of Ambassador Fulci, then permanent representative in Italy in New York, maintains permanent missions in New York, Geneva, Rome, Vienna, Nairobi. It allows the Order to regularly participate and deliver statements in meetings of the UN General Assembly, Human Rights Council, UNHCR on refugees, WHO on health, IOM on migrants, among others, and to organize side events. Examples of interventions, the Grand Chancellor addressed the UN Security Council during an open debate on protection of civilians in armed conflicts in November 2009. Another example is the Grand Hospitaller addressing the high-level meeting of the UN General Assembly on large movements and refugees and migrants in September 2016. And also, uh, this interesting example uh, in Paris at the, the UNESCO headquarters, the Grand Master of the Sovereign Order Malta, Fra Giacomo de la Torre, was received in December 2019 in Paris by the Director General of UNESCO. The bilateral meeting between the Grand Master, accompanied by the Grand Chancellor and the Grand Hospitaller, uh, took place in a climate of mutual cooperation. Since COVID, the Order Malta delivers online statements in New York as well as in Geneva. And an example is the Grand Chancellor uh, delivering a statement at the high level segment of the Human Rights Council in Geneva uh, a few days ago. Other important platforms of multilateral diplomacy are regional organizations. Regional organizations are closer to the issues, have a family-like atmosphere. The Ordo Malta has delegations to the African Union in Addis, uh, to the Council of Europe in Strasbourg, the uh, European Union in Brussels. And the Ordo Malta has informal relations with OSCE, especially on human trafficking, and with the Organization of American States. With Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, uh, the order concluded 
in 2014 an accord card, the cooperation, a cooperation agreement on preventing conflict, mediating in a situation of crisis, uh, promoting human rights and strengthening the rule of law. With the Committee of Portuguese Language Communities, the order signed in 2020 a cooperation agreement offering emergency health care in the poorest regions, training for medical personnel, combating poverty, drugs and human trafficking, promoting humanitarian international law. Beyond intergovernmental uh, conferences, the role of civil society, and indeed we have to underline that uh, non-state actors are taking an increasingly important role in international relations, including in multilateral diplomacy. And here we see that the Order Malta participated since the beginning uh, in the 19th century uh, in the International Conferences of the Red Cross, today Conference of the Red Cross and Red Crescent in Geneva. Uh, the same is true for the uh, San Remo Institute of Humanitarian Law, uh, UNIDROIT and the International Committee of uh, Military Medicine are less uh, famous organizations, nevertheless very useful. And uh, we have also to highlight the Munich Security Conference. Uh, it is an annual gathering held in Munich, Germany since 1963. Each year it brings together uh, more than 300 senior figures from more than 70 countries around the world to engage in intensive debates on current and future security challenges. And uh, the list of attendees include heads of states, governments, international organizations, ministers, members of parliament, uh, media, science, civil society, business. And the Order of Malta participated in the Munich Security Conference with a debate on migration and international security. Grand Chancellor Albrecht Pöselacker addressed the issue of security from a multidisciplinary perspective by analyzing the phenomenon of migration in the light of growing nationalism and growing inequalities that uh, uh, characterize uh, this historical moment. And indeed, we have to see that uh, uh, it's not new that non-state actors are being called into multilateral diplomacy. And uh, that was the then UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan, who actually at the uh, millennium in 2000 uh, gathered not only uh, governments but also invited uh, businesses businesses and uh, asked them to enter into a global compact and this global compact is a non-binding United Nations agreement to encourage businesses and firms worldwide to adopt sustainable and socially responsible policies and to report on their implementation. The UN Global Compact is a principle-based framework for businesses stating principles in the areas of human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. Also, what we have to underline is the increased influence of economic actors in the UN system. And one example is uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with the World Health Organization. Then another form, another new form of multilateral diplomacy uh, are those summits. I'm not mentioning uh, the Geneva summits on Indochina, uh, nor the Reagan Gorbachev summits, but I'm mentioning here uh, first, the World Humanitarian Summit, which took place uh, in Istanbul in May 2016, and uh, it was uh, actually a large gathering where uh, you had uh, 9,000 participants for uh, three days, and actually uh, you had member states 
uh, head of state and government, a private sector representative, and uh, uh, 2,000 people from civil society and NGOs uh, in this uh, uh, summit. What was interesting, it was uh, uh, an attempt by the then Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to re-inspire and invigorate a commitment to humanity and to the universality of uh, humanitarian principles. Uh, and actually, second, to initiate a set of concrete actions and commitments aimed at enabling countries and communities to better prepare for and respond to crises and to be resilient to shocks. Uh, third, to share best practices which could help save lives around the world, put affected people at the center of human action and alleviate suffering. Uh, I must say that uh, uh, clearly not everything was achieved uh, in Istanbul, uh, but still it was very important for the uh, uh, Malta uh, to be here, uh, to be there, and, and uh, uh, the Grand Chancellor spoke at the plenary, and uh, we had also the opportunity uh, to participate in a special session on uh, religious engagement, the contribution of faith communities in our shared humanity, and also uh, we participated in uh, uh, other uh, side events and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, had an opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to make a, a, a large number of bilateral contacts. Uh, needless to say, uh, Maltese International uh, was also represented uh, at uh, this uh, summit. Uh, uh, also, I was mentioning uh, this question of uh, uh, actually uh, improving human interaction. Uh, other summits, uh, and, and I want to especially mention those three summits, Sendai in Japan, uh, uh, Cancun in uh, uh, Mexico, and Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, those three uh, conferences on disaster risk reduction were quite interesting because uh, they were multi-stakeholder, multi-layered, multi-track, and multi-purpose negotiation. You had more uh, participants in Sendai than in Istanbul, and possibly uh, it was impossible to meet everyone, but still it was an opportunity for governments, intergovernmental organizations, uh, humanitarian organizations, parliamentarians, the Red Cross and Red Cross Front Movement, uh, international NGOs, uh, local humanitarian organizations, private business, academia, media, uh, and uh, religious leaders uh, uh, to be there. And uh, indeed, uh, we uh, had, uh, uh, we had indeed uh, <coughs> lengthy uh, formal negotiations by governments uh, on the final declaration, while other actors were looking for practical solutions in uh, hundreds of informal gatherings. Multipurpose uh, governments from developed countries were offering assistance and at the same time uh, uh, resisting the claim uh, to a right uh, to development, insisting on international cooperation. And uh, governments from developing countries were asking for more assistance from donor countries, technology transfers, and uh, a right to food, a right to water, and the respect of their sovereignty. Multi-track, not only disaster risk reduction, but also emergency humanitarian assistance, reconstruction, development, climate changes, environment. The result was a composite text on Nabi Darlequin, uh, as Laurent Fabius, a uh, uh, French foreign minister, uh, was uh, saying. Multi-referential, because references to high-tech, uh, such as satellite communication or space technology, were also supplemented by uh, references to 
traditional knowledge to prevent disaster and uh, strengthen resilience. So, indeed, we had also uh, a study on the rights of indigenous people uh, uh, entitled Promotion and Protection of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in Disaster Risk Reduction, Prevention and Disasters Initiatives. Then another, uh, another uh, let's say, domain of uh, multilateral diplomacy is now religion. And here you see uh, the role of uh, religion in uh, interface dialogue and also in uh, peace. And uh, uh, what uh, the contribution of uh, the Order of Malta is actually uh, to recall the historical document on human fraternity for world peace and living together signed in Abu Dhabi in 2019 by Pope Francis as the Grand Imam of uh, Al Hazar uh, and uh, a milestone in relations between Christianity and Islam. Uh, and uh, the Grand Chancellor reaffirmed, we are committed to answer the call the Pope and the Grand Imam express in the name of the poor. The religious compacts find an example of its intention in Giorgio Malta's presence in Lebanon, where for over 20 years it has been running several social and medical services in cooperation with other faith communities, in particular with the Imam al sadr Foundation, with the Druze community, as well with her highest Sunni authority, Dar al fatwa Another example of a participation of the Order of Malta uh, to inter-religious uh, dialogue is uh, uh, the participation in September of last year to the G20 Interface Forum in Bologna. And uh, indeed, uh, the Grand Chancellor uh, participated uh, with a delegation uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this forum and uh, uh, highlighted uh, the participation of faith-based organizations uh, for the peace and uh, for the promotion of uh, humanitarian law. Uh, there was also a special session uh, against human traffic. Then what we have to say also is that uh, definitely uh, in the last years of the, ninth, of the 20th century, uh, you had uh, certain uh, organizations, governments, uh, and uh, NGOs and individuals uh, trying to, I would say, bypass the UN and to say, okay, why don't we uh, uh, make a codification, adopt a treaty outside of the UN maze, outside of the UN uh, process, which is very lengthy, uh, and uh, uh, let's go directly uh, to a diplomatic conference. And that was uh, actually the case of uh, two coalitions of like-minded governments, international organizations, humanitarian organizations, NGOs, individuals, mobilizing public conscience and bringing governments to adopt treaties. In 1997, that was the Ottawa Convention uh, banning anti-personal landmines land with limited success. Adoption of a treaty, yes, but leaving an uphill battle for ratification and implementation by major powers, which were not at Ottawa, the US, Russia, China, India. And a bit similar in 98 uh, in Rome with the adoption of the Rome Statute uh, and indeed, then it was quite clear that the establishment of the International Criminal Court uh, was uh, an achievement, certainly, but uh, uh, not, uh, not enough, uh, because the political will of governments 
to prosecute and risk being prosecuted. And the human factor, especially the prosecutors, uh, are key to the success of uh, uh, this uh, International Criminal Court. So now we come back to the UN. And indeed, the UN uh, in 2016 uh, 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 launched a summit for refugees and migrants. And indeed, you see that the UN General Assembly hosted a high level summit to address large movements of refugees and migrants with the aim of bringing countries together behind a more human and coordinated approach. And uh, actually, the Order Malta was uh, in New York in September 2016. The Grand Hospitaller addressed the UN General Assembly. Uh, then, as a result of this UN declaration, uh, you had uh, two compacts. Those were uh, non-binding uh, uh, treaties. Actually, uh, the first uh, global compact for safe, orderly, and regular migration, uh, which was uh, formally adopted at uh, an inter intergovernmental conference in Marrakesh in December 2018. Uh, where the Order of Malta was present, the Grand Chancellor made a statement, and the Global Compact on Refugees uh, was adopted by the UN General Assembly in December 2018. So that's a new form of diplomacy because that's not a codification, uh, uh, that's uh, not a, a resolution, that's uh, a more solemn form uh, to uh, bring uh, governments and uh, civil society together uh, to reaffirm uh, fundamental principles, in particular for refugees, the principle of uh, non refoulement. Then, obviously, uh, the order uh, <laughs> had also to, uh, to, to follow uh, the rest of the world and to see that uh, COVID was boosting digital diplomacy from Zoom business meetings to bilateral military diplomacy. And indeed, uh, in uh, New York and in Geneva, uh, we now have uh, live and recorded statements for the UN General Assembly, the Human Rights Council, and so on. And we also have side events beyond the usual suspects. You know, uh, in Geneva, you had uh, uh, always the same uh, uh, participants. And uh, not depending on access to meeting rooms or uh, on travel budgets, and uh, also having also uh, uh, the, I say, the asset of uh, keeping digital or hybrid uh, recorded video videos on websites, YouTube, and Vimeo. Then, that's my last slide. Uh, what can the order of Malta do? Uh, I think uh, you know, these, these new forms of uh, multilateral diplomacy uh, should definitely focus on protecting human life and dignity, including religious freedoms, uh, according to the social teaching of the Catholic Church. Second, use all available platforms, face-to-face, -face, digital, hybrid, for looking for info, lobbying, negotiating, promoting advocacy, bearing witness, and uh, uh, actually also promoting action. And indeed, do not forget the social media. Third, the human factor. I must say, traditional or new forms of multilateral diplomacy need good diplomats or need mixed delegations, senior and junior, diplomats and specialists, expatriates and local. Fourth, reinforce cooperation with traditional allies. Uh, not only uh, within the Order of Malta, indeed, we could have more uh, participation of uh, national associations in international uh, uh, conferences, uh, in multilateral diplomacy. Uh, we have uh, some uh, very uh, open international organizations faith-based organizations, beginning with uh, Caritas or religious congregations and their networks, Renate, Solvodi, Talitacum, 
active in advocacy for human life and dignity and also in action in the field and local organizations. Very important not to forget the local organizations, including victims and survivors, uh, uh, according to the principle of subsidiarity. And fifth, partner. Partner with like-minded governments, international organizations, regional and sub-regional organizations, spiritual leaders, faith-based organizations for sharing info, advocacy, and action. And six, share good practices within the order. Quite often we ignore what we do uh, or we uh, don't share uh, uh, the good uh, we, could, uh, uh, we could share. And actually uh, within the order and beyond through websites definitely but also through training courses online or face-to-face -face, uh, training courses. And last word of course pray because obviously we are <laughs> a religious organization, a Christian organization, and, and prayer is certainly key uh, in multilateral diplomacy, uh, traditional or new. Thank you very much.